I've been thinking about the Beatitudes a lot lately. Over the years, a lot of different people have interpreted the Beatitudes a lot of different ways. But I think Jesus is actually talking to um, the kingdom of God, how things are in the kingdom of God. I remember a few years back, it's been quite a while back, I started a Sunday or a Wednesday night uh, study, and I asked the question, what is the kingdom of God? And when I asked the question, a lot of people looked around the room knowing that they had heard about the kingdom of God all their life. But when they were asked to define what the kingdom of God looked like or what it was, they had a hard time defining that. So I think the easiest way to define that is the kingdom of God is, is how things operate in heaven. How things operate when Jesus Christ is your king and your savior, and he reigns over your life. That's already going on in the kingdom of heaven, and we're called to do things, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in the kingdom of heaven. So I think the kingdom of heaven is how Jesus, how God would do things in both places, heaven and here on earth. And someday here on earth will be like heaven when it's a new heaven and a new earth. So with that in mind, I'd like to talk about the Beatitudes just a moment and, and maybe put a different light uh, on these verses than maybe you've ever heard before. The first is, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I think what Jesus is saying here is, if you mourn, if you're a person who, who deals with death and dying or disease or, or discomforts or, 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 or is being persecuted, if, if you're mourning, if you're a person who is mourning with others, you're going to be comforted. If you have hard times, if, if you have depressing times, if, if there are things going on in your life, if you're mourning... If you're in the kingdom of God, then you're going to be comforted. Don't you want to be in a, in a kingdom, in, in a place where when you mourn, people are going to come alongside you and, and comfort you? Verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Those who are meek, those who are humble, those people, they're going to inherit the earth. Because right now, those who are pushy, those who insert themselves and have the most self-interest, those get ahead. But in the kingdom of God, the people who get ahead are the humble, are the meek and the lowly. Those who put others first, those who are going to be the ones who inherit the new kingdom uh, when Jesus comes back. Verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. You see, in the kingdom of God, those who go after righteousness, those who do the right thing, those who are after the right thing, those who are seeking justice and mercy and faithfulness, those people, they're going to be satisfied. In this new kingdom, where, where you look for the right things, you're going to be satisfied. It's going to be a place that you love to dwell Blessed are the merciful, verse 7, for they shall receive mercy. I think Jesus is saying here, if you're a person who's looking for mercy, if you're a person who is merciful towards other people, you're going to love this kingdom life. Because in this kingdom life, you're going to find mercy. You're going to have mercy bestowed on you. By practicing it, you're going to receive it. And then verse 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those whose motives are correct, who are not looking out for themselves, but whose motives are out of love, those who do things for the right motive. If you're a person who is looking to do the right thing because God says it's the right thing to do, because you're just trying to, to do the right thing for everyone. You're taking everyone's best interest at heart. 
you're the kind of person that's going to see God. You're the kind of person that's going to live eternally with God. Verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Peacemakers. Those who try to keep things tranquil. Those who try to, to correct the conflicts in life. Peace in the Old Testament really means to make whole. And I think verse 8 is saying, Blessed are those who are trying to make all the relationships whole to what they could be in their greatest capacity. Those people, those are going to be called the sons of God. In verse 10 it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for they shall see the kingdom of heaven. It goes on in the following two verses with the same type of theme. When you're being persecuted for God's name, then you're heirs to the kingdom of God. When you're suffering like Christ suffered for the kingdom of God to make things right, all the things that were listed above, when, when you're trying for mercy and justice and you're practicing faithfulness and others are persecuting you, that's okay. Because you know in the end you're going to share in this kingdom with Christ as your brother, as co-heirs of that kingdom for eternity in the presence of God. Well, those are just a few different ways of looking at the Beatitudes of maybe than you've ever looked at them before. I hope this was meaningful. Why don't you take, a, take out a Bible right now, look over the Beatitudes and see what you think about this new kingdom where everything operates like it does in heaven today. Have a great day.